more product, less process. And I, I would really like to hear your thoughts about it and how it relates to some of the topics we've been talking about and the, the trends in general in archival science. Well, I think um, all my professional career I've practiced more uh, product, less process. That the, um, the idea that sitting down and saying that some things deserve a lot of attention and some things don't deserve any attention um, is, um, makes tremendously good sense. I can remember when I was in the National Library of Medicine and we were um, processing um, C. Everett Koop's papers as Surgeon General and there were four record center cartons filled with um, crank mail <laughs> into him. And we could sit down and say, um, crank mail volumes one to four, or boxes one to four, and that was all it um, deserved because somebody who was really interested in trying to study his crank mail is going to want to look at all of it. Um, the um, And uh, we don't need to have the na individual names of cranks. Um, so I think um, that's, um, you know, that's the right approach. Um, the challenge is that um, there's two challenges to it. One is from um, what happens if we want to then digitize that material and put it online. Um, there is a tendency to want to do item level metadata, um, describe things at an item level. Um, and, um, and, and so that gets into the way of that. Um, the, um, um, and then in some cases um, privacy concerns and if internet privacy becomes even more dominant uh, an issue then um, can we do we have to do individual review of these particular letters? Or can we, for example, um, sit down and say, this is a letter, and uh, th in this material we can do OCR and then use um, the software that will and identify social security numbers or other things that are likely to be of concern and automatically redact it um, and try to use system uh, um, approaches. Um, so there... Um, um, in paper format, the, the more product, less process um, is uh, exactly on target. But we might have problems when we get the digital stuff. Now, having said all that, I can't wait till um, I can retire and come in as a volunteer and go back to what I really love, which is sticking letters into um, acid-free folders with pencil notations across the top, and I have the chance to read them all, all the letters myself as I uh, describe them in great detail. But as a researcher, you, know, you sit down and say, no matter how well organized the collection is, um, there's still times when you sit down and say, you know, I really need to sit down and look at the entire collection. And so... Um, in order to make sense of it. So if I'm going to have to look at the entire collection, um, do I need to have that kind of individual level of um, detail that some archivists provide? And, and yes, you don't want to make people um, sit down and have to read every sheet of paper in a um, 120 box collection in order to make sense of it. But if you can sit down and do some kind of broad triage um, and put a little bit of weight on the researcher and that can work well. Now having said that I've just ordered some records, um, uh, copies of records from the UK where their wonderful access to archive system is dealing with um, item level uh, descriptions and folders and so it makes it um, very easy to see what I want. But on the other hand if they had said that you know, even if I had a folder title, I could have said, "Let's um, scan everything and or copy everything in the folder for me," and that would have been good enough. Mm. Uh, the um, uh, 
but in this case, having the you know the folder designation was very helpful. So it's really um, the an attack on the idea that we have to treat everything, the crank letters, the cancel checks, um, anything else, with the same um, level of control that we assign to uh, more valuable material.